In 2010, a renowned former Ku Klux Klan member just out of jail comes up with the next notorious idea. Armed with the vision of a predominantly white world, he forms a new version of the KKK Klan. This time round, under the disguise of a motorcycle club. The Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club. At first, it's a name that echoes with a bit of mischief and a lot of intrigue, especially among other renowned biker clubs. But unbeknownst to them, this club is not the regular run-of-the-mill type. The members are not all about the drugs and territorial disputes other clubs are known for. They're not just regular leather-clad knights of the road. There's more to them besides the steel-toed boots and tattooed arms. They're one of the most determined racists and white supremacists. And they won't stop until they've proven the white race is in danger of extinction. And if you're wondering how they came to such prominence, here's their story. Strap up for a ride of a lifetime. The story of the Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club begins with its founder, an ex-Ku Klux Klan member, Dennis Michael McGiffin. McGiffin's and the club's tales are tied, and let's just say, his resume is a bit more colorful compared to the average Joe's resume. The Ku Klux Klan was a group of American white supremacists, hate groups, and far-right terrorist organizations formed in the 19th century. McGiffin is sucked into the group at a young age thanks to his curiosity. In his mid-30s, he is already a grand dragon in the clan, but he has clearly outgrown it. He feels like most of the clan's leaders are old-fashioned and wimpy, so he makes his choice. The first in a long line of disruptive choices that he would go on to make for the rest of his life. Together with a group of other youngbloods, McGiffin breaks off from the Ku Klux Klan and forms his racist-based club, the New Order. And the timing couldn't be better, because it's the mid-90s. There is a boom in technology, and with it the rate of organized crime activity soars. He and his friends consider their group the reincarnation of The Order, an extreme white supremacist domestic terrorist group from a novel. The Turner Diaries depicted a group of people who made war on the federal government, uh, culminating in the blowing up of the FBI headquarters and the nuclear bombing of the state of Israel. And they intend to go down the same path. They thought, why should this be fiction? Why don't we take up arms and start a race war? But what makes them so sure they will be successful? Well, that's an easy one. They have a strategy. But will it live to see the light of day? They are about to find out. While still in the planning stages of their new agenda, they are arrested in February 1998. A range of raids leads to the apprehension of explosives, guns, and perfectly laid out game plans of how they would contaminate a large water supply with cyanide as a diversion while they carried out bombings and high-profile assassinations in Alabama and Los Angeles. And for the first time, the world puts a face to McGiffin's name a name that would be on the headlines well into the 21st century. In court, they are all sentenced to seven years of imprisonment for federal weapons charges. But is that the end of McGiffin's life in the criminal limelight? Well, it's everything but that. If anything, it's just the beginning. The Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club is not a simple, everyday bikers meetup. Its tale is one of brotherhood and a common belief in unique moral values. The wheels start spinning when McGiffin's six-year stint in jail comes to an end in 2004. He starts rebuilding connections, but he cannot act on them as he is only out on parole. In 2010, he is fully free, and he decides to switch his prison jumpsuit for something more and some leather fits the bill perfectly. He begins rebuilding the Sadistic Souls MC and starts recruiting members. And not just anyone with a love for the open road is allowed to join. He is looking to form something more intense than an ordinary motorcycle club. With a black and silver club dress code and with loyal members willing to die for the club, the journey begins. The vision is exceptional, to create a militant arm of the Aryan nations. And even though it takes two years, he gets his wish. And something more. 
In July 2012, McGiffins's sadistic souls merges with Aryan nations to form one of the most notorious neo-Nazi groups, the Aryan Nation's Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club. And having gone from a KKK to prison then as leader of a band of bikers, McGiffin cannot afford any more changes. But changes can't be that bad, right? Or can they? The Louisiana-based faction of the Aryan Nations that the Sadistic Souls partners with is headed by a man with his own checkered criminal history. A man who refers to himself as the Aryan Nations world leader after the founding father passes away. His name? Morris Gillette. By the time the Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club is formed, Gullet has been around for years and established his authority in the world of white supremacists and racist groups. He offers to be the leader of the new coalition, the Aryan Nation Sadistic Souls. But not without opposition from McGriffins, who feels like his experience with the Ku Klux Klan before he went to jail is superior to Goulet's. When the dust finally settles, Goulet feels like the two groups no longer have the same agenda. McGriffins and his Sadistic Souls members are overambitious and hardly know how to keep a low profile. This eventually leads to them being easily tracked and picked up by law enforcement regularly. But McGriffins cannot afford to let them destroy the reputation he has fought tooth and nail to build and maintain. So less than two years into the partnership, the two groups severed ties after a public name-calling and chaotic outburst. Goulet refers to the Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club and its president as drunks and race mixers. He continues to call out their reckless behaviors and tendency to regularly post pictures of themselves on social media with their middle fingers raised. The tumultuous marriage between the equally white supremacist and racist groups comes to a sad and unfortunate end in 2014. But it's not the end of the sadistic soul's ambitious dream. And so the wheel keeps churning as McGriffins propels the club to new beginnings. Following the bitter dissolution of the Aryan Nations, Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club, a new alliance arises. There is clear strife and infighting between the splinter remnants of the Aryan Nations after the death of their founding father, Richard Butler, in 2004. Back in the 90s, the Aryan Nations were in safe hands. And under the leadership of Butler, it was the most visible and outspoken neo-Nazi group in America. However, since his death, everything had fallen apart, as there were several factions, each led by someone claiming to be the rightful heir to the Aryan Nation's chieftain. After dissolving their merger, the Sadistic Souls and the Gullet-led Aryan Nations join other racist organizations to form a new coalition, the Black and Silver Solution. Other individual groups in the coalition include the United Clans of America, UKA, and the Creativity Movement. Together, these groups are touted to be the closest thing to the original Aryan nations. But there's only one problem. Internal wrangles continue, and even from within, they consider each other unruly groups of thugs. None of them come close to following the initial Aryan nation's ideals and McGiffins's sadistic souls are at the center of it all. First, prior to the 2016 Black and Silver Solution Fall Conference in Scottsboro, Alabama, new allegations are thrown at the Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club. Allegations that threaten to once again bring down the coalition that the members have built for almost two years now. McGiffins and his club are accused of race mixing. Now, during Richard Butler's time in charge, mixing with other races would be tantamount to treason. And while there is no clearly laid out procedure for punishment, nothing is going to save the members from being banished from the Sadistic Souls Club. Not even the fact that McGiffins has appointed Butler's alleged nephew as his international ambassador. So once again, he has to make a choice between two aspects of his life that he holds dear. What will it be? The Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club is in a serious dilemma, but this comes as no surprise. He has the longest list of bona fides of any group leader in the Black and Silver Solution, 
And if he is to be accorded the respect he deserves, he has to prove that he can uphold the group's ideals. But that is not going to be a walk in the park. Certainly not when his own son, a black and silver officer, has a multiracial son. Adding black to the black and silver solution, literally. Just when the sadistic souls think that it's a smooth sail going forward, McGiffin is going to cost them yet another partnership. In the weeks leading up to the group's fall conference in 2016, pressure mounts against McGiffin internally and externally. An esteemed member of the sadistic souls, Dave Bequette, kicks off the exchange on Facebook. He claims that McGiffin is defending his son against facing the consequences of having an interracial son. You've lied to your club brothers about having anything to do with your son who has a child. You lied and said it was a one-night stand when in fact it was over a year-long relationship. It is public knowledge that your son has a custody agreement, pays child support, and still sees this child. It's a painful pill to swallow for the Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club founder and leader. He responds by banishing the member Dave Bequet from the club. But it's just the beginning and the meltdown is about to get hotter. McGiffin's half-brother, also a member of the club, adds insults to the injury. The truth hurts, don't it, Denny? You can tell anybody you want the lies, but I'm your brother. I know the whole real truth, don't I? And you don't want everybody else finding out about what's really going on. But it's not the first time that he is being accused of racial mixing in his family. During the bitter fallout between the Aryan Nations and the Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club, the Aryan Nation's leader provides evidence of the claims. He had even circulated Facebook photos of McGiffin's grandson and court documents related to paternity support. In his defense, McGiffin says, It was an Indian, which is no better to me. But my son was 15, and at 16 it was over. He does pay child support because the courts make him. And I ain't never f***ed with that kid. But say what he might, the concerns are not just centered on his family. The Black and Silver Solution is also worried about the Sadistic Soul's MC New Tendency. On his instructions, the club's doors are now open to followers of all religions. This is a major diversion from the initial rules which allowed only Christians to join. And the club is not the only one that undermines the ideological purity of the Black and Silver Solution. After failing to agree on which rules to keep and which ones to change, Sadistic Souls and Black and Silver Solutions severe ties. Once again, the Sadistic Souls MC is on its own. In six years, the club has experienced an unfair share of ups and downs. So what's next for McGiffin and the Sadistic Souls? The only way to go is up. And up they go. The Sadistic Souls Motorcycle Club is forced to restructure after the allegations against McGiffin result in a mass walkout. Fortunately, he is not left alone. The remaining few bikers aligned with his ideologies are as ambitious as himself. They invite more and more members to join them. And this time, the rules are quite different from what they used to be. Most importantly, it's still whites only, but religious beliefs are not a barrier. To enhance member-to-member -member interaction, new members need a golden ticket and an endorsement from someone who is already revving their engines in this exquisite circle is enough to get them in. Just like a fight club, but with more extremism and racism and less of Brad Pitt. They focus more on growth and spreading their beliefs than rivalries with other groups. This is how they resolve to burn rubber across not only America, but also the entire globe. From the cornfields of Illinois to the sunny shores of Australia, McGiffin has ensured that the sadistic souls spread their wings and wheels far and wide. And decking themselves out in neo-Nazi and white supremacist symbols like SS bolts and swastikas, they rev their bikes beyond typical biker territories to become one of the most recognizable forces in the world of motorcycle clubs.